And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this uh, Monday, October 22nd. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories right here can also be found at our web websites, IndianCountryNews.com or IndianCountryTV.com. And here are some of those news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. A federal lawsuit is seeking money for people whose land was flooded after South Dakota's Owahi Dam was built. The Missouri River Dam was dedicated in 1962. It took more than a decade to build. The Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe recently got some more than $400 million for more than 104,000 acres of uh, flooded land. The affected, uh, the affected property was owned by the tribe and individual landowners. The lawsuit says the federal government should also compensate individual landowners for their lost property. The Sioux Falls Argus Leader reports the plaintiffs in the lawsuit are 95 and 83 years old. The newspaper said there are 24 tribal members still living who lost land when the dam was built. Lawyers estimated the lawsuit could include more than 4,000 people when relatives are included. Russell Charles Means in Oglala Sioux helped revive the warrior image of the American Indian in the 1970s with uh, guerrilla tactic protests that called attention to the nation's history of injustices against its indigenous peoples. Passed away on Monday, October 22nd at his ranch in Porcupine, South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Reservation. He was 72 years old. The cause was esophagus cancer that had spread recently to his tongue, lymph nodes, and lungs, according to Glenn Morris, Mr. Means' legal represent, uh, representative. Mr. Means was, according to the New York Times, and by his own account, a magnet for trouble, addicted to drugs and alcohol in his early years, and later arrested repeatedly in violent clashes with rivals in the law, once tried for abetting a murder, shot several times, stabbed once, and imprisoned uh, for over a year for rioting. He styled himself a throwback to his ancestors who resisted the westward expansion of the American frontier and with theatrical protests that brought national attention to poverty and discrimination suffered by his people. But critics, including many Native Americans, called him a tireless self-promoter who capitalized on his angry rebel notoriety by running uh, quixotic races for the presidency and the governorship of New Mexico by acting in dozens of movies, notably in the title role of The Last of the Mohicans in 1992, and by writing and recording music commercially with Indian warrior and heritage themes. In 1999, Means named Vernon and Clyde Belcourt as the instigators and in leadership in the American Indian movement who had ordered the death of Anime Pictou Aquash through his brother Bill Means, who was then living on the Rosebud Reservation, where Aquash was taken shortly before her execution. In 2010, after the passing of Vern Belcourt, Means told Denise Maloney, the daughter of Anime Aquash, that he knew the AIM leader who had ordered Aquash's death, but that he had an agreement with him not to divulge his name while he was still living and refused to help her find resolution in that situation. Mr. Means allegedly retired from the American Indian Movement in 1988, but leaders of the movement, with whom he had feuded for years, scoffed, saying he had retired six times previously. The Belcourt brothers generally disowned him and his work, calling him an opportunist out for political and financial gain. Russell Charles Means was born on November 10, 1939, on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, the oldest of four sons of Harold Means and Theodora Feather. For hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, native, uh, natives of Alaska have paid artisans to create tools, clothing, and ceremony regalia adorned with feathers. So contemporary Tinklet carver Archie Cavanaugh was startled last month when U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, personnel told him that items he had advertised for sale violated federal laws, specifically a carved hat featuring the wings and tail of a raven and a headdress topped with the feathers of a flicker, a robin-sized relative of the woodpecker. They told me that under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, they can charge me up to a $10,000 and throw me in jail for a couple of years, Kavanaugh said. And they told me that under the Lacey Act, they could charge me up to $100,000 and put me in jail for 10 years. It was very scary, and I went into complete depression.
Kavanaugh said. In shock, he removed the ads from the internet sites where they'd uh, been posted and took the feathers off the items, but that only seemed to make the problem worse. They told Kavanaugh that he was tampering with evidence and that he might face another charge. Kavanaugh hired an attorney and sought advice from Rosita Wuerl, president of the Sea Alaska Heritage Institution. On October 5th, he settled his case for a fine of $2,005 and the equivalent of a ticket. The Fish and Wildlife Service returned the hat and headdress to him, but they kept the feathers. A new report says that Oklahoma's 38 tribes have an annual economic impact of nearly $11 billion in the state. The study from Oklahoma City University's Stephen C. Aggie Economic Research and Policy Institute found that more than 70% of the $10.8 billion impact comes from the tribe's gambling operations. The analysis found that the tribal government and business operations directly employ more than 50,000 people and support more than 87,000 full-time jobs in Oklahoma. Census data shows that Indians represent nearly 13% of Oklahoma's population. The Oklahoman reports that the study was funded by the Cherokee Nation, the Chickasaw Nation, the Choctaw Nation, and the Commerce Department. Leaders of the Porch Creek uh, Porch Band of Creek Indians in Alabama have agreed to stop construction of a planned 20-story hotel and casino in we Tumpka, the Montgomery advisor, uh, excuse me, the Montgomery advertiser reports that the Porch Band and the Muscogee Nation of Creek Indians said in a statement that construction stopped on October 16th. The Muscogee Nation had objected to the project. The tribe has historic ties to the land and is objecting to the graves of its ancestors being exhumed and moved to make way for the expansion of the Porch Creeks. Casino. Robert McGee, treasurer of the Tribal Council for the Porch Creek, said tribal leaders were planning to meet with Muscogee Nation leaders in the coming days to discuss the matter. Moose stew and fish head soup would uh, surprise patients at most nursing homes, but Kay Branch found that those traditional foods can light up the eyes of the elderly Alaska natives in urban living facilities far from their village homes. Branch's creative resolve to make sure Native elders receive culturally important care has landed her a national award from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. The Anchorage woman is among 10 recipients of the Foundation's 2012 Community Health Leaders Award. Foundation officials said Branch was selected for her tireless commitment. Branch, who was to be honored with the other recipients in San Antonio, directed the statewide elder care program for the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium in Anchorage. Branch, 57, said her mission is to see more elders stay in their villages and cared for by family members or locals, a daunting challenge for small remote communities that are off the road system and have limited medical amenities. When staying at home is not possible, Branch and others in the Tribal Health Network seek ways to bring an elder's culture to urban nursing homes and assisted living facilities such as the providing traditional foods. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us and come back again soon.